Consider the following situation. Oliver opens a retirement account by depositing $1,800 in the initial year. He intends to increase his deposits by $100 in each subsequent year. So how much does Oliver expect to deposit in year one? So we would call this year zero, okay? Because that's the initial deposit. So if he's gonna increase his deposits by $100 each year, so year one would be that initial deposit with an increase of 100, which would equal 1,900. And then in year two, well, now he's at 1,900, so he's gonna add one more. So in year two, he would do 2,000, right? Because every year he increases his deposits by $100. So let's look at what this looks like. We just said that in year one, it would be 1,900. In year two, it's 2,000. We just keep adding 100. Now let's go ahead and find the absolute relative change. I want you to notice that relative change and percent change is pretty much the same. So we're going to use this as the decimal, and then this one is the percent. Um, so let's refresh. Absolute change is new minus old. So to find this spot, we have new, and we go back a year to find old. So 1,900 minus 1,800, my absolute change is 100. Relative change is new minus old divided by old. So I take my 1,900 minus 1,800 divided by 1,800, and I get 0 0.056. And I'm going to go three decimal places, and that makes this 5.6%. Okay, now go ahead and hit pause, try to fill out the rest of the table, then come back and check your work. All right, just a quick refresher. If we're finding this year, this one is new, we go back year to find old. So it's always the one before is new minus old, right? So again, new minus old, and the relative change is new minus old divided by old. So hopefully when you look at this, you see some things, right? So we're gonna go ahead and answer some questions about this table. How is the total amount of deposits changing from year to year? Well, hopefully you're like, well, duh, we added 100 every year, right? And that's an increase. What was the same? Well, it was pretty easy to see. Absolute change was the same because we could added 100. Without continuing the table, how can we mathematically find the total amount he'll have in the sixth year? Well, let's think about what we did. We took 100, we multiplied by how many months we did, right? Because every month was 100. So we multiply by the number of months. But we had that initial 1,800, right? So if we went the sixth month, we would take 100 times 6 plus the initial 1,800, and that would give us 2,400. If you think about really what we did. So how can we find a mathematical model? Well, look about what I just did here. This is my unknown value. I had 100 times an unknown value plus something else. If I just put a Y in front of that, ba -da -ba, we have a linear model. Y equals 100X plus 1800, where X is the number of months and Y is the total investment. So, nope, I did not put that in there. So this comes to, if you have, wrong button, if absolute change is the same, you have a linear model, and the absolute change is your slope. Because if you think about it, that was our reoccurring change, and it was 100 every time. So that reoccurring change is our slope. Okay, let's try another strategy. What if Oliver increases his deposits by a percentage each year rather than a specific dollar amount? From our previous scenario, Oliver realizes that $100 is roughly 6% of his current contribution. He decides to increase his deposit by 6% and then every year do 6%. Okay, so we can talk about this two different ways. So we know the initial deposit is still $1,800. He's increasing that by 6%, 0 0.06. So this gives us $108 of an increase. So in year one, it's the 1800 plus the increase, which is 1908. Now, a different way to think through that is to say, well, if you had 1800 and we multiplied by one, that's just 1800. And then if I multiply by 0 0.06, that's my increase. So if I multiply by 1.06, that is my initial 1800 and my 
a 6% increase, which also gives us 1908. Either one of those ways is correct. This second method here just allows us to skip this last step because it ties it up into there, right? Because 1800 times 1 is 1800, and 1800 times 0 0.06 is 108. So by mathematics, we can factor out that 1800 and get this answer. That's a lot of extraness. Okay, so back over here. We know that if we take, we took 1800 and we multiply by 1.06, that gave me 1908. So if I want to find year two, I take 1908 and multiply by 1.06 because again, we're growing by 6% each year. So that's 2022 and 48 cents. Then I take 2022.48 and I increase by 6%. And that gives me 214383. We're talking about money, so we're always going around to the nearest penny. And then I take 214383 and I multiply by 1.06, which gives me 227246. Oh, that's a four. Pretend. Whoop, whoop. 46. Okay, so now again, we're off to find new minus old, and then these are the same new minus old divided by old. So, same concept. This one's new, this one's old. 19, pretend that that's 1908. 1908 minus 1800 gives me an absolute change of 108. I take my absolute change and I divide by the old value and that gives me 6%. Okay, hit pause, try to fill out the rest of the table and then come back, check your work. All right, we got these pretty shades of blue and you'll notice that the absolute change is different every time, right? So let's go ahead and keep this table in mind and let's uh, answer a couple questions. So how do we change from year, from, from year to year? Well, in this case, we're multiplying by 1.06, right? So that is our mathematical rule. We're always multiplying. Remember in that last example, we were adding every time, but now we're multiplying. That makes us the relative change the same. So let's think about what we're talking about. We're talking about repeated multiplication and because every time we're multiplying by 1.06 and repeated multiplication is by definition exponents. So if we take 1.06 and raise that to the number of years, but remember, we also multiplied that by 1800. So this is leading us into an exponential equation. So when I look at this, I have my 1800, my 1.06, and I want to talk about the sixth year. So I raise it to a power of six because that is repeated multiplication. And in the sixth year, we would have 25, 53, 33 without completing the table. And that right there leads us into the next piece. So what I want to show you, though, is that if the relative change is the same, we have an exponential model exponential and let's talk about exponential all right so our exponential models growth and decay are pretty much the same the only difference is the word in here but we are going to have the ending amount is the initial amount growth factor in the middle raised to the time period now when we write these equations we are going to have a number here we are going to have a number here and if we're talking about a growth factor you see that right here a growth factor is going to be greater than one because think about when you multiply by something if i just start with five and i multiply by one i don't grow i stay the same but if i multiply by something bigger than one i grow right if i multiply by something less than one I get smaller. So when we're talking about growth, we're talking about something bigger than one. So this growth factor is going to be greater than one. And we can find that by taking one plus the percent change, right? Uh, because that one is our initial amount and then the percent change is how much we are growing. So let's look at this. Oh, we can also find this by taking new divided by old. Now, it says use two consecutive values. If we go back to our table, um, our first value was 1800, our second value was 1908. Those don't have decimals, so they're the easiest, right? If we say, okay, this one is new, this one is old. If I just divide new divided by old, you get a beautiful answer of 1.06. And that 1.06 would be defined as our growth factor. Again, because the 1 is representative of your initial amount, your 1,800, and that 6% is by how much you're growing. All right, 
So let's just kind of look at this. This is a, um, a graphical representation of those first two examples. We've got our linear model, that first example, and then we've got our exponential model, which is our curve, and that was the second example. So, okay, so let's look at these. Number 15, estimate the difference between retirement contributions at 35 years. So this here looks to be, I don't know, pretty close to 6,000. Let's call it 5,700 for fun, because it's just shy of 6,000. And this one looks to be pretty close to 14,000. It's almost right on that dot. So the difference would be subtracting those two. And the difference is roughly $8,300 in annual retirement contributions. That is a lot. That is a lot. And then number 16, if Oliver's annual retirement uh, contributions are broken across 26 equal deposits, estimate how much the deposit, each deposit would be in the 35th year. So if we would take 14,000 and divide it by 26, that would give each deposit $538.46. And then if we take the other one, our linear one is quite different. If we take 5,700 divided by 26 deposits, that's just 219.23. So, I mean, if you think about depositing the money, it may be more uh, logical, or not logical, uh, practical to only deposit $219 a month um, over 20, or 26 pays. But the 530A is going to get you more faster. You can see how much uh, more you have in there at 35 years. So uh, there is... The difference. There's a comparison of a linear and exponential growth problem.